Techies and Techettes, NVIDIA has dropped a brand new driver within the 465 series. 466.11 comes to us brand new around the 14th of this month. I tested it out. There's a lot of fixes, hopefully for some people that have been having some full bar issues as we see that they did favor the 30 series in the last one. And I appreciate everyone that left comments on their experience on that driver as they went to install. Remember, if you do hit a actual roadblock in this, DDU or clean install from the actual UI of NVIDIA when you went to go install the actual new driver and roll back. That should hopefully fix everything. If not, leave a comment down below, and I'm sure either me or some other techie will definitely help out. My name is Mac here at the MacGyver 7 channel, and today we're going to be looking at what is going down with patch notes, the game-related news, and some benchmarks. So let's go ahead and roll into it. For the direct notes from NVIDIA, I'll have this link down below with the PDF. We'll be taking a look at what's going down on their Reddit and to sum up what's going down, which are some cool stuff. Let's go ahead and take a look at what's going down with benchmarks. Just a little quick teaser before we get into the technicals. Port Royale is what we'll be looking at as the right will be the brand new driver, the 466.11 versus the old driver or some that may people have to uh, roll back to. Um, if that is the case, leave a comment. We'd like to hear what's going down. But as you can see, hardware accelerator on is going to be on the top and off on the bottom. So sizing those up driver to driver, you can see that this newer driver definitely does take a little bit of a step back in point wise. Now for as far as percentage, it's roughly within the same ballpark, but hopefully this fixes some issues. Now for what they say the game ready driver is for is mortar shell and this provides a support on the RTX. Now you have an NVIDIA DLSS boosting performance by 134% at 4K. And additionally, <laughs> this is also a release for provided optimization support for Valorant and the NVIDIA reflex update the nvidia broadcast and the noise reduction support and obs for six new g-syncs compatibility and monitors and so much more they say but moving down past that situation we can see that there are some supreme commanders and the supreme commanders too this will hopefully have the game experience lower in the fps now going back up to what it used to be adobe camera raw which would be very important for editors would see that sometimes it may show up as a black adobe lightroom now hopefully it's fixed as well now vr also comes into it for flight simulator for most people that are running the 2020 vr uh, may have some shutter on the hardware accelerator when it's scheduled is disabled Hopefully now it should be fixed. And as you can see before, it's definitely it would seem that like hardware accelerator off and on. Sometimes it will vary and for certain titles and depending on when your Windows has been updated. It's complicated. It's an ecosystem that you got to keep checking into, which if you're new, you can always subscribe. It's absolutely free. Now, moving on past for as far as open issues, you can see that wow, Batman Arkham Knight, some streaming VR titles. And we have uh, Prepare 3D, YouTube on the shuttering, which was very cool because there are some things you can do. There were uh, comments in the last video I would definitely suggest to uh, check out. Some people found some workarounds, which was really cool. And video hopefully will have this fixed one of these days. Now for as far as what's left on there is a notebook and you can see that it's just the uh, pascal or as far as the higher refresh rate and all these are going to be linked down below but let's go ahead and slam inside of our benchmarks with 4k on the table and let's go ahead and dissect what's going down with directx 11 you can see that there are some improvements in some weird functions it seems like the old driver somehow beats it in point wise but not percentage wise and as you slide over you see hardware accelerator off on the new driver actually does contend with the hardware accelerator on with the old driver and these were with the brand new windows ecosystem updates for framework so this is very supposed to be in a level playing field so Let's go ahead and see what goes down with the, our extreme test for 1080p. And for 1080p, it almost seems like the hardware accelerator off is going to win for a lot of stuff, unless you're having some physical shutters in a certain game when you're playing it in like applications like VR. Um, it's very interesting to see that it's almost like pretty much matched, but a little bit like taking a hit over here. But you can see where the actual physical 
so point wise that's where it slides pretty tough and you can see where it goes back up for hardware accelerator off so i'd almost want to say in 1080p for DirectX 11 just kick it without your hardware accelerator um on for the advanced scheduling you should be fine at least the consistency on the old driver balances and with the new driver it seems to be able to push forward just a tiny bit in the right departments for as far as combining the cpu as you can see the physical portions of what happens with the gpu scores they don't really increase that much so hopefully that's just going to be something that you're going to see like some better percentages because like for as far as a three percent increase that's pretty sweet honestly and, and i did remember seeing on the comments some people were mentioning that their tdp was going up and the idle clock speed on their cpu so hopefully this was a nice balance for people playing in the 1080p department this driver seems pretty promising but let's go ahead and look at DirectX 12 before we sew this up and get out of these patch notes. This is where you see the playing field get a little bit weird. Uh, for as far as where you'll see the best improvement is the newer driver with the hardware accelerator off where there is some pretty cool performance boost for as far as the CPU and the GPU. It, it's pretty apparent like all those numbers are going to be matched up right around there that this is the winning portion if you're running DirectX 12 games. But let's see what 4K has to offer because remember a lot of this driver was focused on a specific title for 4K. And it seems like the old driver wins a little bit. I mean all of them are within the ballpark as you can kind of see that some are going to accelerate past some others in the time spy extreme portion. Hold on real fast. I wanted to show the difference between different processors and RAM and how you can get different scores. Now, as again, it seems like the newer driver with hardware accelerator off will come closer in certain uh, fields. Hardware accelerator off definitely seems like it's kind of the winning token for a lot of the older driver. And as you can see, the different CPU versus the current CPU everything matched there's going to be like a different and the reason why I'm sizing up an i7 I keep switching it around from time to time just to have different results and just for like that moment where I can size up the old driver and we can see like a different scoring happening and like yeah there's about like probably give or take a hundred points but it's not something that's super drastic where it's like percentage wise like where it's the cpu that's really holding the weight so end of the day it seems like it is an optimized titled driver update hopefully we'll be fixing some of the update issues that were addressed with inside of the known issues that are now fixed issues hopefully if not leave a comment down below um, it seems like 1080p and the DirectX 11 does kind of win with this newer driver but it doesn't seem like DirectX 12 will really have some home runs in my opinion but if you're having some great titles in you know you're playing some games and there are some improvements leave a comment down below or if there's some well performance decreases i would like to know that and everyone have a very nice day if you're new to the network you can always like share and subscribe i'll see you guys and gals in the near future for more nvidia related news as it comes live and we will unwrap the benchmarks and we'll size up everything i'll try to put like different cpus in there every so often but it's mainly now that i have like a better rig where i'm having my 2080 ti just kind of hosted inside of there and it's got optimal temperature i figured out it's just like it it likes that setup for some weird reason it's pretty cool but everyone have a very nice day i'll see you guys and gals in the near future stay safe stay classy and i'll see you there